what's going on? So today I've got yet another item for a 10 minute teardown and I'm going to be looking inside the blue snowball ice. So this is the most budget microphone from blue. They make the Yeti is probably their most popular microphone followed by the snowball. This is a pared down version of the blue snowball which in turn is a pared down version of the Blue Yeti. It is a digital USB microphone. Uh, they tout it for podcasts, for audio recording. Say you can use it for musical instruments, but I probably wouldn't. Um, but basically, I actually bought it for these teardowns. I've been using my trusty Rode video mic, but I decided I would upgrade to something a little bit better. So... Let's take a look and see what's inside it. On the back, we can see the openings for the mic grill. It is a cardioid microphone, and so you do get a little bit of pickup from the back. We've got a USB-B, interesting, um, uses one of these guys, which is a little bit disappointing. I'd prefer micro or mini-B. And we have four Phillips screws holding it on. So let's pop those Phillips off and see what's underneath. So unfortunately, I do think this is one of those products that I'm going to have to pull this sticker off, which is a shame because it's uh, it looks really nice, but... Okay, so after pulling that label off, this guy just slides off to reveal the guts. So interestingly enough, all of the connectors that hold these cords, so the USB and the power cord, are actually zip-tied, which is a really nice touch, so the wires will not fall off in transport. Now you can see that with both of these guys here. This one, however, is not. So this connector is for the front LED. I'm actually going to unplug that so that I can take the logic board off of the cover, and then I'll talk about the cases a little bit. So here's the front cover, you can see there. And it's actually lined with a nice foam here just to keep away any pops from um, any, you know, any air pops from when you're talking into it. And I think just to dampen if you have any taps or noise or anything. There's the wire to the front power LED. And this guy actually holds in the ball mount for the microphone mount so you can... Uh, Mount that on there and it swivels like this. This guy is surprisingly heavy. And there's one more wire here. It's actually connecting the ground from the USB cable or the shield to this big metal plate here. So my guess is that's just for noise immunity. And I'm going to unscrew it. It's just screwed in here with a Phillips. So the back case is very similar to the front. It is really just this nice foam, the USB cable and the shield connector there. And it's actually, the grill is just held together with a bead of hot glue. And so that's actually one thing that I've noted a lot on this design. There is quite a bit of hot snot used. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, especially because it's not on the electronics, it's just used for physically securing different pieces together. Similar to the USB connector, the microphone connector is actually zip tied on there, which is, like I said, a good touch, but I'm going to clip it. And wiggle this guy off. Okay, so now we can look at the microphone assembly. Here we've got the microphone assembly. It's pretty interesting, so it's surrounded by this very light foam similar to the grail covers. And it itself is mounted on this dense metal plate. My guess is that's used as a large mass just to dampen any vibrations. The metal plate itself actually uses these silicon mounts. They're really just um, sleeves for the screws to come through to mount it to the PCB. And the microphone, which is really just an electric microphone, is mounted inside this soft silicon. And I've actually noted that there are two here, 
or two holes here for mounting. My guess is the standard Blue Snowball actually has two microphones, one of them being the Omni for the omnidirectional pickup, and this one being for the cardioid and the cardioid minus 10 dB. So the standard Blue Snowball has several different modes where this one only has one. Really not much to see on the back here. Okay, so the circuit board powering this guy is hilariously, almost insultingly simple, but pretty much exactly what I expected. We've got our input connectors for our USB and the LED, and we have the input for the condenser mic. Interestingly enough, there's one more jumper or connector for what I presume is the extra microphone in the standard blue snowball and duplicated circuitry that we see on the mic input. Basically, my guess is this is just filtering circuitry. There's really very little going on here aside from some passives and some caps and one transistor. Other than that, we have the star of the show, which is going to be a C Media CM6327A. This is a single chip mono microphone interface and a USB streaming interface for this microphone. Aside from that, there's an Atmel 24C02BN, which is a 2K serial EEPROM. And that guy just provides the configuration interface for this streaming or DAC chip. Aside from that, there's just a few caps, just decoupling. Um, there's probably some AC coupling here for the microphone. And just a few passives, uh, I2C pull-ups, and that's really it. So... Honestly, very simple. There's actually nothing on the back side, but that's really all you need. Now, these C media chips are very popular, especially in lower cost electronics. You really get a lot of bang for your buck. Several of the products that I've taken apart that use audio or a streaming interface actually use one of these C media chips. So that's what's inside this guy. Um, it's well built. It's held together with a little bit of glue, but nothing that I can really complain about. And overall, I'm hoping to make some cool teardowns with it. So if the audio sounds better in videos after this one, you know why.